Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Small Business Small Talk, where we come together to talk business for ourselves and our community and how we can grow together. So, what am I? Am I muted? Oh, okay. I, I saw this. I was, we, if you couldn't tell, we are live through this Zoom platform, which is one of the most fantastic things ever. We're able to come together in a virtual sense. And I have a guest presenter today who is one of my most awesome friends in my circle of influence, as well as my accountability partner for my business. Because this month, the month of February, we're gonna focus on all things that create and keep us accountable because it's March, people. The whole res resolution thing at the beginning of the year, how far along in the year do you keep that? When you set your goals at the beginning of the year, how long does it take you to drop off the ball? So March is a great time to reignite those things. How do we get back on track and all of that good stuff? And I know that we have a great session with Charlene because she has got this amazing background that she's bringing to us today. It's full of customer service, digital marketing, all of this great stuff. But the really cool part is that she has facilitated masterminds for years. And she's also the founder of Grow Alliance. And I am welcoming my friend, Charlene Burke. Hey, Christy. Thank you so much for bringing me here. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it is a wonderful Monday. Yes, it is, always. Ooh, Monday. Yeah, I don't know that I go quite that far, but <laughs> I'm okay with this. Monday, yes. And you are so right. Okay, so, you know, here Charlene was trying to be more. This is what Small Business Small Talk is about. Relax for a moment, right? Let's take mm -hmm. a deep breath. Oh, we have a break for not quite an hour, and we get to spend yeah. it together. I love what you said, Christy, that we are into March. We're just about finished with the first quarter, and your entire um, focus for right now is accountability, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. All of February, or all, all of March, all of March. See? For the entire month. Mm -hmm. You want me to go ahead and just take over? Uh, yes, with a quick quick piece on housekeeping for those that are in the room currently and as people enter, please feel free to add, jump in. You can ask a question. Best way to do that is through the chat feature on the side. So if you're scrolling along the bottom, you'll see that chat feature and you can type in those questions. Uh, and then of course, I'm positive Charlene's gonna allow time for questions and answers and we can have great conversation together then. So with that, take it away, Charlene. Thank you, Christy. So the entire month of March is about accountability. There's a variety of ways that we hold each other and ourselves accountable. The first thing I want to address, though, is that it's amazing the number of successful people I speak with who are successful because they were held accountable to somebody else. That is the premise of my bringing to you my presentation titled, any minute now, ta-da! The Power of Mastermind Group. I call it this, and I'm going to do my own little housekeeping here and get some things out of the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that it's an actual, like, for real presentation. There we go. All right. So again, the power of a mastermind group. I have been facilitating mastermind groups since 08. I started in person and then in 09 went virtual. Now in reality, what that means is it was by telephone and then it moved to Skype. And then when Google Plus Hangouts came out, it moved to, moved to that platform. And now we have been meeting on Zoom for the past few years. That's simply to tell you that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to the power of a mastermind group. And as I move forward with this, I hope you will see by the stories that I tell just how powerful this can be for you. All right, so this is what I'm going to cover, and it quite simply is, let's be clear about what a mastermind group is. Then I'm going to go into why you should join a mastermind group, whether it's mine or somebody else's, but why you should join one. And then how to find a mastermind group, the most often asked question that I get. 
So to begin with, I put it out to you. I want you to think about this for a second. If you want to respond, feel free. You can either jump on with your mic or type it into the chat. What do you think? What comes to your mind when you hear someone say mastermind group? Yes, I want you to take that, hmm, mastermind group. I want you to think about that for a second. I've gotten many different types of responses to this question. Some are in agreement with what my definition is, and I'll be sharing that momentarily. Others have been along the lines of, and let me know if you are thinking this. Oh, it's a gathering of people so that we can all learn something. It's a, a panel after a live conference, and I get to hear what the masters, the gurus, and I'm doing the air quotes if you can't see them, because it's what we call other people. They're not calling themselves this, but I get to hear them, those who presented, talk more or share more. I, I actually attended one or two that were called a mastermind group, and I had the privilege of watching them in a Google Plus Hangout talk to each other and then try to sell me something. Now the question is, have you ever been a member? Just any mastermind group. And it's usually at this point, I'll get a, a raising of hands of about 25% of the people that are in the meeting, whether it be virtual like this one, or in a workshop or a group setting or a presentation, if you will, where I'm speaking from the stage or in a small group. But about 25% will actually raise their hand. And now the question comes, what was your experience going from excellent, very good, good, average, or poor? And I get a variety of responses to this. Some have been excellent. Some have found a group that fits them. And that's fabulous. And I encourage that and I'm so happy for them. But on the poor side, what I hear from people is that, well, I showed up and I was the only one that knew anything. And when I questioned them a little further, what do you mean by you're the only one that knew anything? They had joined a group specific to an industry and it turns out that they were the most experienced and everybody else were newbies and they were being sucked dry. They couldn't get anything out of the group. They were willing to give, but they weren't getting anything. So then I've heard experiences of, well, it was average. And what makes it average? And the response to that has been to this point, please, if you have a different response, put it in the chat area for me. The response to this point has been, well, it was okay. I went and I heard, you know, I attended online and we met once a month and I heard other people talk about their problems. And then we had homework and, you know, it lasted about two months. So actually, I went to about four meetings and then nobody showed up anymore. And my question to that is, who was the leader? And I get a blank look. There was no leader. And then we have the ones that say what was good, but it wasn't good enough. I wanted more, but when I asked for more, the person I went to wasn't able to give me more. So it ranges from the experience of being in a group coaching session or group training where you're learning something and have to go away with and walk away with homework to come back and report back how your homework met, went to a, a gathering of like-minded people, but there was no equal amount of sharing, nor was there a real leadership in place or or a clearly defined facilitator who made sure that those who had something to offer were given the opportunity to do so, and those that didn't know squat would have the opportunity to ask questions and to learn from each other. Runs the gamut. Well, from this point forward, I want you to think about a mastermind group as this. 
it's not just my definition, this is based from Napoleon Hill, that is actually the term was coined by, as it's two words, a master mind, by Andrew Carnegie, who, who funded Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich research. And it quite simply is a group designed to help you navigate through challenges using the collective intelligence of others. This is the definition that I use when I talk about masterminds. And it's also, it's also the definition I use when I talk about the power of a mastermind. Think about that for a second. If you were in this meeting that's depicted right here and you put a problem out and every person put out a possible solution that could fit your problem, and then that solution was refined. That's exciting stuff. It's exciting. So based on that premise that it's a collective intelligence, right? It is the gathering of two or more to help you to grow your network, yourself, and your business, which is why you want to join one. Now, how does that work? So to grow your network, I want you to think about being in a group of people in varying stages of their life. Now the mastermind could be personal development, it could be a church-based group, it could be a, another religious-based group, it could be a book study where it's deeper than just read the book and discuss, but actual how do we apply this in our lives kind of book. Could be a mastermind of business owners in a specific industry, could be a, a group of people in various stages of their business, but all having something similar in that they understand business processes, but they're coming in from different industries. What do you think about you're in a meeting, in a regularly scheduled meeting of less than 10 people, and you're getting to know each other, and you have been watching one of the members grow their business from what's been happening in the group. And that member, over a period of time, you, you've talked with them outside of the meeting, right? You've connected privately and have had conversations. And that member asks you, I'm looking for an introduction to somebody in this industry. Do you know anybody? And you say, I'm happy to share some of my network with you because I trust you, because I know you. And I'm happy to attach my name to these people that I know that are in my network. And now think about this. You've been generous with your network. And all you have to do is ask another member for a little support. And they're gener generous with their network. You have just expanded your network of professionals, of people, of like-minded people, varying skills and talents, varying backgrounds, varying places in their life. You grow yourself, and here we get to the heart of it, accountability. I love this phrase from Bob Proctor. It is the glue that ties commitment to the result. If you are sitting in a group of people who have come together to help you to solve a problem, and you tell them, after all this discussion has ensued, this is what I'm going to do to move forward to solve the problem I brought to you, and I thank you for your time. You bet your booty they're going to ask you the next time you show up to that meeting, so how did it go? What did you do? What were the results? That's where the accountability from mastermind group comes into play. It's not that the leader says, this is what you said you were going to do. I'm going to follow up with you every other day during the next two, three weeks in between the meeting. Let's make sure you're on track so when you come back to the group, you can tell everybody how wonderful you've done. No, you're a grown-up. You're the one that sat there and said, I commit to you, my group, that I will have done this when I come back to you. And when you come back, they will ask. You see, they have a vested interest in your success. And here's the interesting part. Because of that, you have personal growth you did not expect. 
you have people not only interested in your success, but now, now you feel obligated to them because of that interest, because they've given you answers to come back and to say this worked or this didn't work. This is the result. Thank you for your time. I honored what you gave me and put it to use. The other part of that is because you actually do it and you took yourself out of yourself for a moment and thought of other people and are accountable to other people, your personal growth happens. If you've not experienced it, it is a tremendous feeling. If you have experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let me tell you a story. This is about how to grow your business. Current member of a mastermind that I facilitate. Solo business owner, Google AdWords certified, has customers in the healthcare, primarily in a plastic surgery, plastic surgeon field, manufacturing software company and companies. So he's in a little bit of manufacturing, a little bit of healthcare. He's currently at capacity but he needs more revenue. That's the problem he brings to the group. He had started out as a freelancer, became an actual full business owner, tried to develop a fulfillment team, and decided quite a few years ago, made the conscious decision he did not want to outsource anything. He wanted to actually do the work himself. Hence, he is a solo business owner, but he needs more revenue, but he's at capacity. He only has so much time on his hands. He's got his clients in a row. He's got the work in front of him and he can't do any more, but he needs more money. So he comes to the group and he says, help. Oh, <clears throat> so the group gets to work and they are fast and furious with the sharing of their experience and their knowledge. And these ideas start pinging off of each other and they're starting to talk about their networks and their resources and all of this is happening. And when you think about the term mastermind as two separate words, as the group was saying, Jane was saying, hey, you know what? I've done this and with one of my clients. This may work with you. And Joe says, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, but that doesn't work with what he's talking about because you have to bring in other people. How about we do this? So you can imagine the kind of discussion that's ensuing, right? And it's getting exciting. And what's happening is, and this happens online as well as in person, this other energy starts forming, that master mind, this third source of knowledge, source of energy, whatever you want to call it, happens. And it's evidenced by new ideas coming out of people who didn't even think like that before, right? It is, oh, I didn't think of that. You can see it in the eyes and you can hear them say, well, isn't that interesting? How'd you come up with that? Oh, I get it. Now, wait a minute. Let me add this to it. And it's exciting. So, that's the first meeting. He goes home. We end the meeting. Other people have had their opportunities to bring forth issues, get their um, results and, and updates, all that. The meeting went on accordingly. But for this one in particular, he took everybody's ideas. And he went back to the office and a month passed. And he had kind of ruminated and marinated on these ideas and tweaked a few of them. And he came back and he said, you know, I really appreciate all that you shared with me. I refined a few of the ideas. And honestly, here's the problem. I'm still going to have to expend more energy with each client. And, or one of the ideas was how to actually bring on a new client that um, he just can't handle. All right, so we started talking again. More ideas came about, refinement came about, more resources were thrown out, tools that he wasn't aware of. It wasn't meeting number two. He does the same thing and he goes back to his office. Meeting number three, he comes back. Now I want you to think about this for a second. It's been three months. He still has a good solid client base. He wants to increase his revenue. He still has some sales efforts out there, but no real business is coming in. His sales pipeline isn't that full. And if he were to tackle any one of them in his business, 
it would be a six month sales cycle because that's just the nature of what he offers. So three months have gone by, he comes back and this is what he brings back to us. From the group, he was able to keep his existing company customers, repackage all of his services and offer them to his existing com customers as a package at a higher price. But he's not doing any more work. What he did was he simply called it something different, attached it to a level of results that the customer had already experienced and was looking for more of, and presented it as an option. If we go in this direction with this package, this is the cost, and it costs more. He has the same level of work, and based on that, he added $18,000 a year in revenue to his business. This is what I mean by the power of a mastermind. He never would have considered putting this together on his own, nor, turns out, would he have been viewed that as an option from a business consultant he was working with. In this case, it was the group and the group effort that he got this solution from. So let's talk about where do you find a group? Because by now, you're thinking, I want to be a member of a group like that if I can add that level of revenue, added revenue to my business. The first place I'm going to show, tell you is go to Google. The best place, quite honestly, though, is I want you to talk to a person that you currently admire and are following that you consider to be successful and ask them if they are a member of a mastermind. And if they are, would you be eligible? You are interested in learning more or becoming a member. Is that possible? The other thing you can do is go on to your social media platforms, whatever platform you are active in because you have connections on that platform and put it out there and tell them, I am looking for a group. Now, if you're looking to be a member of a business group in a specific industry, or a skills-based group, or a target group, if you know the kind of group you're looking for because you know the results you're looking for, then put that with it and just put it out there and tell people, I am looking for a solo business owner mastermind group with a diverse group of people in diverse industries, or, I am looking for a mastermind group of business owners that are in manufacturing and are, are not in the same industry, but have, you know, have 100 employees, right? Put it out there. Only then will the people that, who know you know what you're looking for and how they can help. So you've done that. And you have a couple of options. You found a couple of groups. You've been, you found some information on how to connect with a leader in a group. What do you do? Well, <laughs> there is power in being a member of a group. This is where you're going to choose your group wisely because they define how successful you will be. Now you're sitting there saying, all right, so I've got three to five options here. Some of you are saying, hey, I've got two options. That's all that's come up over the past month of asking. Well, that's fine. You just need to choose wisely. And what I'm going to recommend you do is to ask questions of the leader of the group. First, make sure there's a leader. And then ask, how is the group run? Is there a limit to the number of members? These are just suggested questions that I recommend you ask a potential leader of a group or the leader of a group that you really want to join. You know, I am not sure what is important to you here. Again, I'm offering this as a recommendation to get you thinking. You don't want to just jump into a group because remember, while there's power in being a member of a group, they are going to define how successful you will be. Remember the, the experience of somebody who says, I'm the only one in the group that knows anything about business. Ah, you're an anchor, right? You feel like you're getting sucked dry. You feel used. 
How successful will you be if you're in a group of people like that? Or think about this conversely. How successful will you be if you have no idea what to do about anything? You are so new that you are now in a room full of real experts and you can't contribute anything. So ask those questions. And are there off-limit topics? Some of my groups have off-limit topics, by the way. Off-limit are highly personal topics of discussion. We're not gonna talk about your relationships in these groups. Does everyone participate in a meeting? In my groups, yes. Even if you can't say anything about the issue that's presented, you can say aloud so that you have physically participated in the meeting to say, I honestly don't know what I can contribute right now, but I'm available with, with my resources and my networks if you find them useful. Sometimes that's all that needs to happen. What are the expectations of group members? How are payments handled? How are complaints handled? What if you're in a group and you just can't not handle this member? They are a steamroller personality, extremely dominant, and you've had enough. They're just not, they're not, it, you've just had enough. I can tell you that that happened in one of my groups, and my group members feel free to contact me the minute they have a concern or a complaint, and I have fielded those. There was an instance where that occurred, and she, this was, she gave it a good shot. She came to me after about the third meeting and said, I, I just, I cannot handle this anymore. Well, the issue wasn't so much that this gentleman was a dominant personality. It was that he was direct with his questions. And her personality was such that she really was into the very soft, very easy kind of conversation that, um, you know, you, you lace everything and couch it in, uh, in, in softness, right? And she decided to stay in the group because we talked about it. And she had to agree that actually, no, he really isn't dominating. It's me that's not stepping up. So she agreed to stay in the group and to speak a little more clearly. If I agreed as the leader, because this is what I offered to her, knowing this about her as a member, I as a leader agreed to make sure that the way the questions were asked and the discussion ensued, that I paid attention to her. That's really all that she needed to know, was that I was there to guard her, that I was there to make sure that the members were safe. It was not a problem, it turned out to be an excellent group. Um, are formal agreements in place? Are there any testimonial, testimonials anywhere? Is there anybody I can talk to that this is for somebody who I'd recommend it, right? Anybody I can talk to just to find out what that experience was like. So these are examples of questions that you should feel free to ask any leader of a mastermind. Today, I have a short ebook available to you. It's free, it's about eight pages. It covers everything that I've uh, covered today, plus a bit more. Also answers the second asked question that I get every single time, which is, can I just sit in on a group? Can I try before I commit? Mm. So the website is thegrowalliance.com forward slash power ebook. And I have put that in the chat section. Beautiful. So anybody can actually hit the uh, under the more uh, button for chat. You can save chat. So whatever gets typed there, you can save it as a text file to your computer. You should also be able to click on it and it opens up in, a, in the browser into a different tab without leaving the meeting room, depending on the device you are coming in from. So I encourage you to check out the short ebook. I'm always available for questions. So my contact information and everything you need to know about how to reach me is, is in that ebook. The next thing that I want to say, and this goes directly to that accountability and being a member possibly of a mastermind, is that your mindset matters. And 
whatever you come into a group with, it will change and it will change for the better. You can prepare yourself to be a better member of a group if you're having difficulty with breaking through and to thinking about success. You want to dream big, but you're stuck. You want to think bigger, but you can't seem to even when you're amongst a group of people talking bigger. You want to be more than you are right now. I have developed this series of, uh, it's, a, it's a variety of eBooks that I've written, images, affirmations, and it's five months and it could, does cover, these are literal eBooks that I have written over the past couple of years. And most of them include my own experiences of how I looked at something and changed it, how I changed something in myself, the breaking of the habit, that smoking was a big one for me, how to focus, how to remove distractions. It's also available in a bundle. So it's up to you. Feel free to go to growmindset.com and check it out. Share it. Feel free to share both of those with your networks. And finally, so I discussed the importance of a mastermind. The Grow Alliance has a retreat for business owners. And it's happening May 5 through 7 of this year in Crystal River, Florida. Our presenters are presenting experts. Kristen, David, Gloria, and Nick will be there. Yes, this is the point that you can literally walk out the back door to. It's about 100 yards, right, Christy? Maybe 100 yards to the edge of the river. Relax, get into small group discussions. There'll be time for play. It's going to be awesome. Now, remember I was talking about, I'm talking about masterminds here. So at live conferences, weekend or otherwise, at huge events, at small workshops, I have yet to find one that offers a mastermind follow-up to make sure that whatever it was that you learned that weekend actually makes sense and gets implemented in your life. That that's the biggest difference between this weekend and others. It's a retreat for a variety of reasons. It is not just about let's learn something tactical to grow my business. It is about connecting with other people. It's about connecting with yourself. And it's about making a decision by the end of the weekend that I'm going to focus on something professional or personal for the next 90 days. When you attend the weekend, you're automatically put into a 90 day mastermind that I will facilitate. And the group will make sure that you are held accountable to the commitment that you made over the weekend. So that after 90 days, you haven't forgotten what you had said you wanted to do. You have actually put it into place and you have grown from the experience. I encourage you to go to thegrowalliance.com. We have webinars and live streaming happening and you'll get updates if you sign up. A variety of ways to connect with me. And it's a simple matter of a search. Uh, search for my name, Charlene Burke, and this will, you'll see all of these. You can do a search on Facebook, um, connect with me personally, or go to my page, which is Grow Because You Know. Uh, go to our group. I invite you to join the Facebook group, The Grow Alliance. And now I will open the door up for questions, questions, comments, anything that you would like to share. And if you'd like, I can stop sharing my screen. You tell me, Christy. Um, well, let me, let me ask those that are in the room. Does anybody need Charlene to kind of go back to uh, focus in on one specific slide? Because if not, then we can do the stop screen sharing and we can see faces. And since nobody's jumped in, let's go ahead and stop the screen share. All right, I am back. Beautiful. All right, so let's do speaker view this way. Fantastic. All right, so first of all, thank you, Charlene, very much for sharing all of that stuff because sometimes even just knowing what the basics of being a part of a mastermind is, what a mastermind actually is supposed to do, 
you know, because <laughs> yes, we've, we've all to some degree, form or fashion have had a mastermind experience. Mm -hmm. and it, it could have been called something else, but you know, if the impression of the mastermind uh, to me has always been, I'm going to be surrounded by all these experts that should help me figure my stuff out. Right. Right. So uh, I should not have, I'm coming in and I don't have the answers to my questions. You're supposed to help me with that. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> that is part of it. But it's also, I do have answers. And this surprises so many people. It really does. It surprises them that they're actually able to help other people. So I can give a, a short example of what that looks like, if you're okay with that. It was the, we had a group that included a, a young man who was a math tutor who had no idea how to record a video, much less upload it to YouTube. No technical, all right? On the other end of the spectrum in the same group I had a gal who'd been in business for five years and was launching a full-blown online brand new it was beyond a membership site it included a directory it was an industry it was new to an industry kind of site where this was going to be the go-to place it would be very much like the sba site right wow that's an industry thing well this is what she was launching so now you think, oh my gosh, why in the world are they in the same room? Well, the reason was they all had the same idea. They wanted accountability. It was primarily an accountability group. They wanted to sit with people who understood how to run a business. Didn't matter the level of experience that they had. They just knew the value of trading things off. So really the reason I put them together in a group was because of personalities. So having said all that, you have this gal who's in this high tech situation and she puts out there, I'm not sure how to actually word this, how to talk to these people, what I should say. I've got these emails going out and I've got the videos and I've got, and she listed all the ways that she was communicating with her target market and discussion ensued. And finally, because he had been so quiet, I asked Math Tutor, uh, do you have anything that you would like to offer? And he said, yeah. Why aren't you picking up the phone? <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and he said, that's all well and good, but they're not responding. I'm not understanding why you just don't call them because you only have you know, 50 people or so, why can't you just call them and tell them about the program and then send them to someplace on site, you know, online? And it totally blew her away. And nobody else in the room had considered it. I know it sounds simple, but if you, want, if you had heard the entire discussion and where she was coming from, you knew that she had already made plenty of money online. She knew online marketing inside and out and was struggling with this in particular. She came back, she made phone calls, her, her business started growing, things started happening. But, you know, that's the value and the power of being a member of a group like that. You get to hear something that initially might sound a little nuts, but think about it a little more or hear from other people to flesh it out and amazing things can happen. I know there have, for me, there have been times I've been in a group um, and I've facilitated my own to some degree as well. And there's been times even as the facilitator where my dog is not in their hunt, right? I keep mm -hmm. my stuff out of it, but what they are going through and sharing with each other and the ideas that percolate in that room, I'm over here on the side going, Oh my God, that was fabulous. I'm <laughs> Do that Are you giving away the whole reason why I love being a facilitator? <laughs> I have got business 101, 102, 201, 301, all in front of me. And it, it's been powerful as a facilitator to hear what works and what doesn't work and to have a you know my thumb right on the pulse of what's working for those who are in large businesses and what's not. Yes. 
Yeah. And it's, it's amazing to see, you know, there's some basics of business, right? There are some basics that should be able to just pick up that box and hand it off to the next business person and it should work, but it doesn't, that's not always. <laughs> so we have, now we're in this, we're in this uh, ecosystem, if you will, this economic ecosystem that we need to be able to be flexible and pick and choose those things that are very specific to who we are, what our business is, and who we're talking to, you know, who we want to work with. And so being able to put those things together, I, I, I don't know how, I don't know how business owners, business professionals are doing it without a mastermind these days. Well, see, I honestly don't think they are. You're either growing or you're going backwards. And while it's not evident, often to the person which direction they're going, they think they're just sitting still, but it's not true. If you think you're just sitting still, you're either, if you haven't already gotten some momentum of moving forward and it's just a plateau, then you're going backward and it's a slow spiral, but it's, it happens. And what, the reason I say that is because I can look at somebody's business, for instance, as a manufacturer in our area, um, I was brought in to review with an outside consultant. I was brought in on the marketing side and the customer service side to kind of review where things are and help them determine where are we now. They thought they were growing because they had increased revenue a bit, they, you know, a small percentage. And it's not a, a small business. I mean, you know, we're talking about 30, 40 million a year. But when we were looking at it, the customer base had decreased. And I started looking at some of the some of the information that they had given me. And I said, "You're going backwards," and it's completely dependent on you haven't changed anything. Your processes are the same, and everything is the same as it has been the past 15 years. You're not interested in business growth. You're interested in getting more sales. And that has been their problem. So they're started, they're going backwards. They had a, a spike or a hitch up in revenue because a handful of their customers needed to order more for inventory purposes. Right? That does not constitute a growing business, no. So what ended up happening is that this outside consultant actually recommended to the CEO that he join a CEO round table so that he could stay on top of things like that because he wasn't a member of any kind of manufacturing group or he wasn't listening to anybody else's stuff he didn't know what was happening out in the world outside of his little bubble right mm. and he thought the bubble was fine well it's not it's shrinking and that wasn't what he wanted he wanted it to grow he wanted to hire more people he wanted to have a bigger impact on the world but he couldn't and that was the problem is because it was just him and his his c-suite team but still even then it wasn't nobody was being exposed to different ideas and whatever hence the outside consultant brought in best thing that ever happened to him it's you can't do business in a vacuum uh -uh. i mean you can't grow you can't grow and you can do business for a little bit but then you start what I've found working with clients and sometimes get my own stupid rut, thus my accountability partner yeah. is that whenever you're, you're stuck in your own little hamster wheel, you just can't get off of it and you're not going anywhere fast. Right. But it's still, it's the illusion, right? So another example, now that's a long-term example. That is 10 to 15 years of essentially stagnation, mm -hmm. but slow decline. Right, with little hitches of revenue, so they think they're doing okay. Always just get a new customer, just get another sale. That, that was their whole focus. So when you're that large, that can that's essentially what ends up happening is that it has you have to look at data over a period of time. Now let's bring it to the online world. I can introduce you to pockets of highly successful online entrepreneurs who fizzle and fall away after a year. They came in with the big bang, 
the revenue was, I mean, I know some who made revenue of 250 to $400,000 in that range. It cost them 75% of that to get that revenue. But by gosh, they made their splash. They jumped in. They had the programs. They did everything right tactically. The problem is that they were stuck in their own bubble. And when everything stopped, it literally stopped. So, woohoo! Yeah, you made forty thousand dollars in profit that you could take a salary for that year. Now comes the next year. So what can happen is they think, "I'll just do the same thing I did before." Though, well, they're welcome to. They'll do the big bang. They eat up most of their funds that they came in with, so that they could do this huge launch. Usually, you can see it as a product launch, and then. So now I was out for a roller coaster. At the same token, I can introduce you to online entrepreneurs who are doing a slow and steady growth. And that's steadily year after year because they're thinking long term. And they're able to because they meet regularly with other entrepreneurs, bounce ideas, have access to resources, get that accountability, you know, the shiny object syndrome. That's oftentimes all that comes up is that shiny object. And one minute somebody says it, it's like, okay, yeah, glasses on, hide. But it's um, keeping you accountable to what you said you wanted, which was long term growth. You want to be bigger, you want to scale. And in the online world, honestly, you can scale in six months. And what I mean by scale is you can go from zero to half a million dollars in six months. And it's sustainable if. You have a team around you, an inner circle, to help keep you grounded and focused. If you don't, you'll reach it, and then you'll just fizzle. So it's, um, you know, it all depends on who you want to be and what you want to build when it comes to a business. Oh, there's so much I want to say, and so many different directions we could go, but I, I want to definitely try to stay as focused as I can about, you know, the theme for the month is the accountability. Accountability. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we know, we hear it, we see it all the time through companies about, um, let's, I'm throwing it out there, Weight Watchers. We know for a fact people won't keep weight off unless you are accountable to doing what you say you're going to do. That's right. So, the same works for any other aspect of our lives. And if we're businesses coming together, like it, this is why I love where this small business, small talk concept is going. I want to be able to have things like this to offer to small businesses to be able to then share ideas amongst themselves. And we grow into different things. Now, the nice thing is, is my friend Charlene here already has masterminds of which I, is now a resource for small business small talk to send people to for specific areas that fit whatever you're going on. So when I say other specific areas, I'm like St. Matthews locally might have mm -hmm. something here where they want to physically have lunch together. You know, so it depends on your your um, the tactical approach to that kind of stuff as well. But that whole concept of being accountable, doing what you say you're going to do, and sometimes for even me, like for example, last week with our mastermind that we are a part of. For me, there are times I have to use it simply to stay sane, right? As a business, as a business owner, and I'm at capacity in one area of my business, and I need to then start working on a whole nother area of my business to not only, it's kind of launched, but I've lost momentum. It's like, how do you restart while you're at capacity? So those kinds of things of, I was losing my ever loving mind. And when you got, I'm like, just have, just tell me how you do it. We all do that. Yeah. <laughs> and being able to come to a group of people you can trust to say, I am losing my ever loving mind. <laughs> Help me means a whole lot in this world of business because I now have a group that I don't have to be on. I don't have to have it all together. I don't have to have all the answers because we come together with that. We're sharing those things. And so right. I, I just love this whole long standing concept of masterminds. <laughs> so what, what just share with us briefly then, first of all, does anybody in the room have any, any additional questions for Charlene? Cause I'm guessing you guys are just enjoying the back and forth, but please jump in. I see Christina's here. We've got, 
Gypsy Seven. We got Mash Crat. What I'm I'm guessing that might be Michael, but I'm not real sure. Um, and also for those that are in the room, if you would like to share your contact information along the side so that you can just kind of network with our with us and with each other, uh, anything that you got going on, it's fair and open. I'm not going to force people to do that because not every you know not everybody wants to do it, but that's quite all right. Um, but so then if nobody's jumping in to make me stop talking, mm -hmm. share with us a little bit about you went through last year uh, and a little bit of the previous year on Blab doing this morning mindset, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all sparked from Napoleon Hill. How has that adventure affected your new adventure with Grow Alliance? So in 2015, Blab was, has <clears throat> since gone under or stopped. It's not gone under, it's stopped. Blab was an experiment, just so everybody knows. Um, a, a, um, and Blab was somebody else. It wasn't Charlene's thing. That's right. If a man with an endless supply of money wanted to fund a group of developers to create an online live streaming platform that allowed for random conversations to happen. So he did that and they called it Blab. What it allowed us to do is go into a room similar to this where only four were there and then we had active chat to the side and we could close the room or we could open it. So what I decided to do was to test it to see if um, there might be a group of people interested in learning about success principles. And I did that because I was coming out of survival mode. Recession had hit. I was in uh, financial. Uh, we had been through a huge financial struggles and we were coming out of that physically, but mentally, I was still in survival mode. And we all know what that's like, which is paycheck to paycheck, thinking very short term, just take care of what needs to be taken care of right now. That's it. Can't think of the future. There is no future. All right. So I started Blab. That on the Blab, I started a morning mindset cafe. And it was every weekday morning from 8 until 9, 30, 10 o'clock, where I would read a portion of Think and Grow Rich or after we were finished with it, we went to Success Through Positive Mental Attitude. I only read a portion, and we discussed that portion. And I controlled the room so that if anybody got a little crazy, I kicked them out. Because we were there to talk about mindset. We were there to talk about being better. From that, there was a community that, cre that was created, people of like minds. So knowing that Blab was going to going to go away because we all knew it was an experiment. In 2016, I started the Grow Alliance Facebook group and I invited those from the Blab community to come join me over there. And a lot of them did. A good 50 or 60 people came over. I want you to think about that. There were 50 or 60 people that on every any given weekday morning were dropping in on that discussion to get their day started thinking about being better. And the premise of the Grow Alliance is what was my outro from that morning program, and it still is true today, which is that we want to move forward with the day on purpose, with purpose, to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. And that essentially encompasses what a powerful mastermind group can be. So in this group from the Grow Alliance is growing slowly because guess what? Not everybody's interested in moving forward. Think about that for a second. I'm not at all surprised that I don't have 10,000 members in that group. You know, I'm thrilled that I have over 100 people that want to gather. Every morning I post a morning mindset about for the day related to a principal in some way, Napoleon Hill. And then I write a little bit about how I see it and how I've seen it work in my life, and I invite people to discuss. There's room for other discussions to happen. What's been percolating in my mind since I started my business and attended my first conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico, my question at that conference was, what are we going to do after this to make sure that what we learned is going to be effective in my business? 
or nothing. Why not? Well, because we didn't think it'd be of interest. We didn't know how to put it in, in place. Every conference I've been to, I asked that question. Every live event I would go to, I think about why aren't you having a follow-up? Why aren't you having something that ensures that what I learned, I actually put to use? And then, of course, there's the conferences and live events, which were rah-rah, you know? And what would end up happening is a week or two later, I could tell you it was awesome, and I learned this. And I'd show you from my notebook, right? I'd show you my notes and how awesome this was, and woohoo! And then three weeks later, this goes on my shelf, and it gets put away. So then I decided that the Grow Alliance is more than just us gathering that I wanted it to be more. I want it to be a robust online community of business owners who are seeking to grow their hearts, their minds, and their businesses. And the only way to do that was to begin with having the live retreats where people get together in small. It's less than 25 people. It's not 250 people. It's less than 25. Followed up with that mastermind so that they not only have access to those presenters the entire weekend, but about the fourth or fifth week into the mastermind, they will have access to those presenters again if they have questions or concerns. The presenters have all agreed to this because they believe, as I do, that if I'm going to share with you what I know works, what I know has worked for me, what I believe will work for you to grow yourself and your business, why aren't I willing to make sure that you understand it? And that's the kind of people that are involved in the retreat and in the Grow Alliance. That's what we're there for, is that, you know, if you buy my services, you're going to understand what it is that I, I've, you've purchased. I still have people who've, who've purchased the Grow, the Grow Mindset series, and occasionally I get these emails. I'm happy to have a conversation with them. It's important to me that... Whatever it is that you came to learn, you actually learn and are able to do. Hence, the Grow Alliance is going to be a group of people that all believe that. And I'm so glad that you shared that. So for the last, I just kind of want to wrap this up, hopefully with a nice, neat little bow, because that brings hope to the world. In all honesty, in the, in the business environment that we're in, with everything going on, how do we focus? Where do we focus? Being able to have a mastermind that we can come together, focus on a real solid vision for the future that incites hope and action. Those two things together. We learn new things. We, we move forward in positive directions. We're able to help each other and everybody grows. It, it just, it does boggle my mind that not everybody's interested in that, but that's okay because they wouldn't fit into the mastermind. And who right. needs that? So with that, Charlene, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to stop the recording. The room is still open for just a few more minutes because that's the benefit of having a little pre-time and a little post-time. So with that, Charlene, thank you very much for your time today. And join us again next month on Small Business Small Talk where the theme for April, springtime, it's all about growth. So mm -hmm. what are some great business practices to grow you and your business? See you again next time.